Welcome to this celebration of Holy Mass, real for me, virtual for you. At this Mass, we will pray for all of your intentions, all the cares and concerns you have in your heart. Pray for the end of this coronavirus pandemic and for a speedy uh, development of an effective vaccine. Pray for all of those who are still cleaning up after the derecho and who are still hoping for rain to end the drought for their fields. And we pray for peace in our country where there is civil strife, racial hatred, you know, conflicts with police and, and other law enforcement agencies. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate your neighbor, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 
The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requ requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servant saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. This past Tuesday, Loris College 
announced the decision of the governing board to take down the statue of Bishop Loris. And in fact, it was taken down the very same day. Taking down his statue isn't an attempt to change or deny history. Bishop Loris was our first bishop. He did start the college that bears his name. And his remains are buried in our cathedral. But it is unfortunately also an historical fact that Bishop Loris owned a slave, a woman named Marie Louise, and that he profited from her labor, eventually selling her to another owner, and was seemingly without remorse for shame. The decision to take down the statue was a statement that Bishop Loris isn't worthy of being honored that way. Though they decided to keep his name for the college, go figure, taking down the statue doesn't reflect a judgment on Bishop Loris or condemning him. We don't know his conscience. Besides, it's not our place to judge or condemn. That's God's prerogative. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Our place, or, or at least my place, is to say sorry, to ask pardon, and to ensure that the objectively heinous and harmful thing done by one of my predecessors isn't repeated in any way. And it's also our place to heed the heart of Jesus' teaching. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you in kind. This teaching fulfills or perfects the divine wisdom recorded in the book of Sirach, our first reading. Forgive, hate not your neighbor, overlook faults. Forgive 77 times, Jesus tells Peter, which is Bible talk for pardoning everyone for any offense, however many times we've been hurt, over and over and over again. When someone hurts me, and I want to get even, I repeat to myself a phrase. Let it go, Mike. Learn from it. Forgive. Give, be content, be grateful. And I repeat it again and again until I am ready to forgive. Sometimes I have to repeat that phrase 77 times, if you know what I mean. It's hard to forgive, but I'm going to try because I don't want to hear Jesus say to me, you wicked servant, I forgave you. Do not judge or condemn. Hug forgiveness tight. Remember the nice things done for us, especially by God, who forgives a greater debt than anyone will ever owe us. What do you believe in? 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In faith, let us pray to the Lord for our needs and the needs of all men and women. We pray for our church, especially here in this country, uh, that we will repent and change our ways and atone for our sins, especially uh, the sins against the dignity of the human person when bishops and religious communities and, and others owned slaves and profited from their labor and sold them as if they might sell property of one sort or another. For mercy, we pray. And we pray for our country, uh, the civil community, as we prepare to vote on the local and state and national level uh, for those men and women who we will vest with authority to govern our community, our state, our, our nation, uh, that we may do so conscientiously, guided by beauty, truth, goodness, and that those who are elected will serve the poorest of the poor, the common good, and respect the life and dignity of all from womb to tomb, we pray to the Lord. For all of those who are sick and suffering in any way, especially from the coronavirus or from any kind of ill effects from the derecho or the drought, um, for healing and for the strength they need to walk with Jesus under the weight of the cross, we pray. Pray for our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated, especially for those who are innocent or whose punishment doesn't correspond to their crime. We pray for all victims of oppression and injustice, the victims of crime. We pray for those who had to flee their homeland in search of peace and prosperity that we may welcome them here, care for them here, we pray. Finally, we pray for the faithful departed, especially for the poor souls in purgatory who must make up for the temporal punishment due to their past and forgiven sins. And perhaps it is fitting today to remember Bishop Loris, and if he still is in need of purification before Entering into the joys of heaven, may our remembrance and prayers serve that purpose. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, have mercy on us and hear us as we pray. With the help of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit, contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exultation, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires, 
may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. So there's much in the news these days about the development of a vaccine. Some are saying maybe by the beginning of November, and others are saying, well, we're not going to rush it, and so we'll take our time. Well, I hope they do. But work is being done, and is being done very fast, and we're grateful to the, uh, the pharmacy companies that are doing this development. And so we're hopeful for the day when we can return uh, to receive Holy Communion in the Eucharist in the context of Holy Mass celebrated in church with the Holy Community. Please, God, let that day come soon and let all of us return to rejoice in our faith with the community. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.